ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر والها وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين الحمد لله we praise Allah عز وجل and half of Ramadan is over it's hard to imagine we're on day 14 or 15 of Ramadan how quickly the days went Allah عز وجل said for a reason in the beginning of the verses of Ramadan the first thing he says in the details he reminds us ayaman ma'dudat it was just a handful of days and really if you think about it it was just a handful of days just a moment ago we were preparing for Ramadan deciding where to go making our schedules and now half the month is gone in a few moments the rest of the month will be gone we'll be thinking about our eid and then the re- next part of our lives this is the reality of life my brothers and sisters all of life not just ramadan but all of life is ayam and ma'dudat just a handful of days hasan al basri said it best he said ya ibn adam inna ma anta ayam kullama dhahaba yawmun dhahaba ba'du he said oh human beings son of man son of adam you guys you people are just a bunch of days all your life is a bunch of days every time one day is gone a part of your life is gone forever so this is how we need to look at our lives look at the months that we are in look at the life that we live it's just a short period of time it will go very very fast uh, allah azza wa jalla describes the life of isa alayhi salam in 3 days this is the shortest description of someone's life he says was salam alayhi yawma wulida وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيًّا He says, Salaam, peace be upon him, Isa alayhi salam. The day he was born, the day he will die, and the day he will be resurrected. If our life can be summarized in three days, this is it. The day of our birth, the day of our death, and the day we're resurrected before our Lord. So this time is going very, very quickly. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً liman arada an yadhakkara aw arada shukura allah is the one who put these nights and days in succession one after the other the day comes then the night comes then the next day comes then the next night a rapid succession khilfatan liman arada an yadhakkara the real question is not how the days go but the real question what we did in our days what we did with our time allah said liman arada an yadhakkara those who want success either they're reminded by this quick passage of time or they are grateful man arada shukura so the real question my brother sister is how much time do we have left what are we going to do with the time that we have at this halfway mark at this time when many people describe it as a mid ramadan slump many of the masajid the attendance is down and we see in tarawih now many of the masjid are half full or half empty how you look at it in this moment we want to remind ourselves of the greatness of ramadan to inspire us to think about Ramadan in a different way and my message today is that Ramadan is a month of infinite possibilities Ramadan is a month of unimaginable potential if we only tap into it this is a month of mighty and momentous change first of all you have to see this as a season of change there are great changes in the heavens 
Allah's Messenger, when the Ramadan would come, what, what did He remind us of? Atakum Ramadan, Shahrul Mubarak. A month is before you, a blessed month, a month full of barakah. Tuftahu fihi abu abu sama, wa tughlaku fihi abu abu al jahim, wa tughallu fihi maradatu shayateen. This is a month of changes, a month where the gates of the heavens are opened up, where the gates of hellfire are closed, the shayateen are locked up. It's a month of barakah, a month of unprecedented productivity and blessings in everything that we enjoy, a month of magnification of reward. There are, there are these cataclysmic changes that happen in the heavens up above and that reflects in our lives. This is a month you see generosity. The spirit of generosity is palpable. You can feel it. You see worship. You see people reciting Quran. You see us pushing ourselves to unimaginable potential. You can never imagine prior to Ramadan that you would stay up until midnight or 11.30 every night praying, standing in Qiyam and they're going to work the next day. Ramadan teaches us many, many things. This is a great month. The winds of change are in the air. It's just up to us. Are we going to be swept away, swept away by these winds? Or are we going to take advantage of the season of change in order to transform ourselves? This is a month of possibilities. This is the month where Allah revealed the Quran. Shahru Ramadan. Alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. This is the very month Allah revealed His Kalam to humanity. The final word. The book of Allah. This great book that changed the course of humanity. This is the same month, this month of possibilities where Allah placed the crown of Nubu'ah and the mantle of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us the gift of our Nabi. This is the month where the Muslim, the month of possibilities where 313 Muslims defended themselves and they made this Ummah survive. Had they not done so on the battle of Badr, we would not be here today. وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّةٍ Allah says, we gave you victory on the day of Badr, which was in Ramadan, so that you may fear Allah and be thankful for, your favor, for His favors. This is the month where Allah opened the, the, the city of Makkah, Fathu Makkah, where the Prophet ﷺ came back to his homeland after all these years of persecution in victory, where the deen of Islam was completed, a great victory that Allah describes Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. We have gave you a great victory where now your deen is complete. Now all your pillars can be practiced. Now you have come full circle. This was in Ramadan. This is a month of unimaginable potential. A month that's the center of our identity. We can't imagine how Ramadan is part of who we are. It's the Quran. It's the, the nubuah of, the, of, of our messenger. It's, it's, it's all the critical moments in our history where Islam was defended, all these happened in the month of possibilities, the month of Ramadan. This is the month where we are allowed to be ourselves, where believers achieve their full potential. Allah removes the distractions of desires, the distraction of temptations, the, distra the, the lifestyle of consumption, and all these other distractions, and Allah pushes us to do what we are supposed to be doing all the time. This is a month where believers realize their full potential. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, he said in a hadith, he said about Ramadan, and I'll use that for the rest of the khutbah just to drive some lessons. He said, Man sama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. This is a hadith in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari. Man sama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Then he continued, Wa man qama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِ And then he continued, وَمَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ إِمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن ذَنْبِ The Prophet talked about three things. He said, whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with iman and with ihtisab, all of his or her sins are wiped out. And then he said, whoever does qiyamul layl, stands up in the nights of Ramadan with taraweeh, qiyamul layl, tahajjud, reciting the Qur'an, all of his or her sins are wiped out. Again, the condition iman and ihtisab. And number three, whoever stands up in the night of Laylatul Qadr with iman and ihtisab, all of their sins are wiped out. So this is, Allah gives us three levels of this great mercy of having our sins wiped clean. Three different occasions. And these are the three main tasks of Ramadan. What is Ramadan about? What are the activities of Ramadan? Siyamun Nahar, fasting during the day. Qiyamul Layl, praying and reciting during the night and trying to achieve Laylatul Qadr. 
So these are three great acts of worship that Allah wants us to, to have our sins wiped out, wiped clean. But there's one condition or two conditions. You have to do it with Iman and you have to do it with Ihtisab. Iman means you're motivated by faith in Allah. You're doing it for the right reason. You're not doing it haphazardly. You're not just going with the crowd without thinking. You're doing it for Allah Azza wa Jal. Ihtisab is you're doing it with purpose and meaning. You know what you're doing. You're expect, expecting that reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what worship is. One of the great lessons we learn from this. And these are the lessons to unlock our potentials for Ramadan. Number one, we have to do things with meaning and purpose. Iman and wahtisaban. Allah will not accept worship that's done out of ghafla. That's why Imam Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu an, he said, لا خير في عبادة لا فقه فيه لا فقه فيها ولا في قراءة لا تدبر فيها He said there is no good in an act of worship in an act of worship that there is no meaning or insight behind it meaning the act of worship has to be done with understanding you have to have the proper intention you have to know what you're doing you have to be directing it towards Allah Azza wa Jal not haphazardly so this is a great lesson if we do things in our lives with meaning and purpose, it will make our lives much more powerful. It will open us up to more possibilities. And that involves not just acts of worship, this is a condition for the acts of worship. Without intention, without niyyah, innama al-a'malu bin niyyat, nothing is accepted from us. But it also, this is a great potential for things that we do. Going to work in the morning, taking care of things, putting out the trash. If you do these things with the right meaning and purpose, intending Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah gave you this halal means of livelihood. You're doing, fulfilling your responsibility for the sake of Allah. You're taking care of your family. You're taking care of your parents. With this intention, with this meaning and purpose, even those mundane things we do that normally don't have reward, but they carry immense, tremendous reward. So you can transform your life in unimaginable ways by living a life of meaning and pur purpose. Imanan wahtisaban. Number two, a great lesson we learned from here is the idea of transformative fasting. Siyam, fasting is not just giving up eating and drinking. Too many of us, we put in our minds, fasting is about eating and drinking, not doing certain things that break your fast in the daytime. That is very little to do with it. That's the bare minimum. This is the easiest part of fasting. But how many times did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warn us and tell us, لَيْسَ السِّيَامُ مِنَ الْأَكْلِ وَالشُّرْبِ إِنَّمَا السِّيَامُ مِنَ الْلَغْوِ وَالرَّفَتِ he said, fasting is not really about food and drink. But fasting is really about uh, falsehood and immorality. He said, مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعْ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً فِي أَنْ يَدَعْ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ He said, whoever does not give up food and drink, Allah has no need for that person to give up their food. Their, whoever does not give up lying or acting on falsehood, Allah has no need to give up that person to give up their food or drink. So fasting is not really about food or drink. It has to transform your life. You have to approach it a different way. I'll share with you an advice from Jabir ibn Abdullah, one of the companions, who said beautifully what fasting should be. He said, إِذَا سُمْتَ فَلْيَصُمْ سَمْعُكَ وَبَصَرُكَ وَلِسَانُكَ عَنِ الْكَذِبِ وَالْمَآثِمِ He said, when you fast, whenever you fast, let your hearing, your sight, and your tongue also fast for all types of sins and falsehood. This is the real fast of the companions. It's not about the food or the drink. But let your eyes fast, let your ears fast, let your tongues fast from all types of sin. And he said, don't oppress those who are below you, like your workers, your employees. And let there be on the day you're fasting a, an aura of tranquility and dignity. You should be visibly noticeable that you're fasting. There should be this waqar descending upon you. And finally, he said, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَوْمَ فِطْرِكَ وَيَوْمَ صِيَامِكَ سَوَىٰ He said, do not let the day you're fasting be the same as the day you don't fast. That means we should be qualitatively different on the days that we fast. This is what transformative fasting is, my brothers and sisters. Finally, number three, transformative qiyamul layl مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانِ The Prophet mentioned qiyamul layl This is a great act of worship. What is Qiyamul Layl about? Is really reciting the Quran. It's the opportunity to recite the Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. 
This is really what this month is about. Our entire night should revolve around the recitation of the Quran, standing in Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud, Taraweeh, or reciting on its own. This is very, very important. This, but this recitation has to be transformative, it has to be different from just the sound. Imam Al Ghazali says, Mujarrad Harakatul Lisan Qalilul Jadwa. Just moving your tongues without the other components of recitation has very little benefit. What's the main benefit? He said, Well, Maqsudu Bil Qira'at Tadabur. The main gift of recitation is this idea of Tadabur. You have to think about it, you have to reflect over it, you have to internalize the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the real purpose of reciting Quran and Qiyamul Layl. Imam Hassan al Basri once, and we shared before that, we shared the statement of Ali bin Abi Talib. La khayra fi ibadatin la fiqha fi. And the second portion, la khayra fi qiraatin la tadabbura fi. Imam Ali said there is no good in a recitation that doesn't contain this element of tadabbur, of reflecting, pondering over the message of those verses. Hassan al Basri once came to a gathering and he found people reciting mechanically. And he felt that they were reciting too mechanically. And he felt that they were dividing up the Quran, prioritizing, finishing the Quran. So he said to, he scolded them, he said to them, Inna man kana qablakum. He said, those before you, this is how they used to approach the Quran. And he mentioned three things. Those before you, who are those before him? Hassan al-Basri is the best of the tabi'een, the generation after the companions. Those before him, he's referring to Abu Bakr and Omar and Uthman and Ali, the generation of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'een. He said, Inna man kana qablakum, ra'auhu rasa'ila min rabbihim. They saw the Quran, as personal letters from their Lord. The Quran they felt with personal letters from their that's how they viewed the Quran. And they used to read them at night and reflect over them. And during the day they would live by the messages in those letters. This was that personal relationship that the companions had with the Quran. It was a transformative relationship. It wasn't just a book that's distant from themselves a book that they don't understand, a book in a foreign tongue. No, this was a personal book. They felt that each and every verse was directed towards them. Muhammad al-Quradi said, Man balagahu al-Quran ka'annahu kallamahu Allah. He said, whoever reads the Quran or whomever the Quran reaches, he should understand that Allah is speaking to him or her. And that really is the case. That's not an exaggeration. That's not a literary device. It really is Allah's message for humanity. When you read the Quran, Allah is speaking to you at that moment in time. This is the personal relationship we need to have with the Quran. We need to have the element of tadabbur. Tadabbur is not just understanding the meanings. Understanding the meanings is the bare minimum. But tadabbur means you know the meaning, but then you think about the meaning. You keep thinking to yourself. You reflect, you ponder over what this really means. Why did Allah say this? Why is Allah emphasizing this and this verse? You keep repeating the verses as the companions used to do. They spend the nights in prayer sometimes repeating just a few verses. The Prophet ﷺ, once he spent the entire night crying, reciting just one or two verses. Not entire surah, but the entire night, one or two verses, thinking about the meaning, tadabbur, reflecting over the meaning. This is the kind of relationship we need to have with the Quran. I'll end with what Imam al-Ghazali says. He reminds us, he's a great scholar, that the Quran is so magnificent, it's so amazing. If you know what the Qur'an is, there's no way you can have this transformative relationship. So he describes the Qur'an, he says, put yourself in this mindset of thinking about the Qur'an in ways like this. He says, فَالْكَلَامْ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ The Qur'an, كَالْمَلِكُ الْمَحْجُوبِ الْغَائِبُ وَجْهُهُ النَّافِذُ أَمْرُهُ He said, the Qur'an is like an emperor hidden in the deepest cover of the night, whose command is everywhere. You can't see his face, but the command, is the dominion is everywhere. He says, he said, like a sun, blazing sun. You can't look at the body of the sun, but it's rays of everywhere. When you have the sun, you know it's daytime, even though you can't see the sun. But it's so obvious, the rays reach every place on earth. And he says, the Quran, The, the, the Quran is like a radiant star guiding those who are lost in their journey during the night. He said, well, Quran, The Quran is a key to invaluable treasure. This is how you have to approach the Quran. It's a key that's going to unlock the most invaluable treasures in your life. And he says, Quran, 
It is the elixir, the drink of life. If you drink from it, you will never die after that. This is how you need to approach the Quran. May Allah give us that tawfiq. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim. Wa nafa'ana wa iyaakum bima fihi min al-dhikri wal ayat al-hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin. Fastaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبيه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد today we're reminding ourselves that Ramadan is almost gone we're halfway through and it's a reminder to ourselves to push ourselves to realize what Ramadan is Ramadan is a month of endless possibilities when you minimize all the distractions around us you minimize the idea of food and drink you minimize all of these things you revive that spirit of taqwa, God consciousness in our lives. When we're fasting, we're aware of Allah. We don't put anything in our mouth because we have that sense of taqwa. When you have all of these things, and all things are possible in Ramadan. We saw in the past how all things are possible in this month of, of endless possibilities. We saw what happened in Badr. We saw the day of Fath Makkah. But Muslims continue throughout our history, rising to the challenge and defending the Ummah. How many people know? That Andalus was opened in the month of Ramadan with Tariq ibn Ziyad in 7-11 when he entered Andalus. And he opened that whole region for Islam. And he had a whole 700 years of glorious Muslim history. So many scholars came from that region. That began in the month of Ramadan. That's the Barakah of Ramadan. How many people know that Salahuddin defeated the Crusaders, the Battle of Hittin, in the month of Ramadan? How many people know that the Mongols were defeated for the first time in the Battle of Ain Jalut? in the month of Ramadan. So Ramadan is a month of infinite possibilities. All of us need to realize and rise to that occasion. There is nothing that is off limit. If you realize who you are, brothers and sisters, human beings are the pride of creation. Allah created human beings. We created human beings in the best structure, the best prototype. Allah created human beings and he boasted to the angels, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am creating a creation on earth who will represent me. And this is Allah boasting to the angels. The angels were fearful. They said this creation is going to spread havoc and bloodshed. And Allah said, I know that which you do not know. So the tremendous potential of insan is realized in this month of Ramadan. There are no limits to you, brothers and sisters. Don't put any limits on yourself. Don't let the hunger get you. Realize the, the, the momentous changes that are in the air and grab those changes and utilize that to transform yourself. There's nothing that you can't achieve. Finally, the last lesson, the Prophet said, Man qama laylatul qadr. This is a reminder that the last 10 nights of Ramadan are a special season. It's a season where Allah sends us a night, khayrun min alfi shahr, a night which is better than a thousand months. This is a night that is worth an entire lifetime of worship. This is a month that we should all seek. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. Whoever misses this night has lost indeed, has missed out indeed. So this is a night we need to plan, my brothers and sisters, in about five days. The last ten nights will begin. The Prophet ﷺ, When the last ten nights began, the Prophet would tighten his belt. Meaning he would be ready to push himself and work harder than he was working before. And he would wake up, give life to the nights. And he would wake up his family members. This is a period where the nights are more precious than the days. These are the, where one of these nights will be Laylatul Qadr. We need to seek those nights just to give you a sense of 83 or, or a thousand months. What is a thousand months? That's 83 years. And if you reflect over that, what is 83 years? That's a full lifetime of a human being, one of the fullest lives you can imagine. If, the, if Allah had said it would be a lifetime, most people live to 60 to 70 years. But 83 years, there are some people that live that long. When you see someone who's 83 years old, in your mind you realize this is a full life. MashaAllah, Allah gave this person a full life. So Allah gave us one night where our worship is equivalent, our prayers, everything that we do is equivalent to entire full lifetime. And just to, you know, these, this is not about mathematics. Allah says, خيرم. it's not a thousand months, but it's better than it.
far greater than that actually. But if you just make a calculation, just to give you a sense, to inspire you, what this means, that means one hour in this night is 9.8 years of worship. One hour is worth 10 years. One minute of time in this night is worth 58 days of worship, two months of worship. One second in this night is worth 23 hours of worship. One second is like a day. Just imagine that. This is a night you don't want to miss. This is a night you need to plan for. This is a night where you need to be ready with your prayers, your supplications, your dua, your Quran. Make sure you try to seek this night. We don't know when it exactly is. It's likely in one of the ten, last 10 nights of Ramadan, uh, the odd nights. So may Allah give us a tawfiq to seek that, to realize that. May Allah accept our prayers and our fasting. Allahumma taqabbal minna siyamana, wa taqabbal minna qiyamana, wa taqabbal minna salatana, wa ruku'ana, wa sujoodana, wa sa'ir a'malina. Allahumma tawaffana muslimin, wa alhiqna bi salihin, wa gaira khazaya wa la maftunin. اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرة التي إليها معادنا وجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم اكفنا بحلالك حرامك وأغننا بفضلك عمن سواك اللهم آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله سمع الله من حمده الله الله أكبر الله الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى نطلع الفجر الله سمع الله من حمده الله أكبر